hello good morning so here another lecture on magnetism we have already seen the diamagnetism and paramagnetism today we will see the details about the ferromagnetism so our learning outcomes are what is ferromagnetism domain theory of magnetism its theory of ferromagnetism anti ferromagnetism and ferry magnetism we will see the details of this so what is ferromagnetism it is the material which is strongly attracted to the magnetic field magnetized in the direction of external field that means external field reinforce the magnetization materials containing unpaired electrons these are the materials magnetic moment of electrons retain magnetism after removal of the field examples are iron nickel cobalt alloys of these metals some rare earth alloys are the examples of this ferromagnetic materials so magnetism exists even if the external magnetic field is absent okay permanent magnet is mainly due to spin magnetic moment spin magnetic moment of ferromagnetism to material is of same order as that of a paramagnetic atoms large magnetization is due to the exchange coupling between the adjacent atoms so that that we'll see in the uh, next slides so paramagnetic susceptibility is equal to c which is constant upon t minus theta where t is the absolute temperature so here uh, the graph between one upon uh, susceptibility uh, versus temperature so as the temperature increases the susceptibility decreases as we know one upon psi uh, that is increasing straight line but the yellow line indicates this yellow line indicates the behavior of this yellow line indicates the behavior of ferromagnetic material so this dotted line shows the paramagnetic behavior and this yellow line shows the ferromagnetic material so uh, what is the difference between paramagnetic and ferromagnetic material that we will see by the theory of domain theory that is we can say so this is the domain theory in domain theory one can imagine the regions which are called the domains where the all the atoms are oriented along the same direction that is magnetic moment in that region will be same that is they couple together to get the uh, alignment along the same direction so these regions are called the domains so domains are the small regions in which magnetic alignment of all the atoms are aligned in the same direction so when external magnetic field is applied all the domains will orient along the external field and that will be converted into the uh, a permanent magnet we can say so here the what is the uh, domain means what okay that we will see the volume of each domain is around say 10 to the power minus 4 cm square to 10 to the power minus 2 cm square so these are the regions uh, uh, in which the magnets will align in the same direction after the coupling domain wall is about say 10 nanometer thick so as i shown in the figure so these are the domain walls uh, they are about say 10 nanometer thick uh, in one domain nearly 10 to the power 17 to 10 to the power 21 dipoles are there in single domain that means these much atoms are say these much atomic magnets are uh, aligned in the same direction they couple together to get the magnetization in the particular direction so this is how one can see the uh, uh, effect of magnetization uh, according to domain theory so initially uh, initially along the curve OA okay so this is the uh, external magnetic field and this is the magnetization so along the curve OA this is AB and this is BC so if you divide this curve into three regions so for the region OA where the magnetic field is 
very low. So here in this case, when you can say reversible domain replacement of boundaries means the boundaries are replaced, but that is reversible for the uh, low external magnetic field. If the external magnetic field is further increased, then what happens? That is second stage, that is irreversible domain replacement of boundaries. The boundaries will be replaced and it is a irreversible process. If you reduce the magnetic field, then the domains cannot reform. Okay. And the third region is the uh, domain rotation. The entire domain will orient along the external field. So this is how the behavior of domains depending upon the strength of the external field. So here, uh, as we know, the magnetism is the uh, originated from the electricity. So here, one can say is the surface charges uh, will appear at the end of the crystals in the domain that can be treated as this. See, for the single domain, one can show like this, the charges distribution. And for the multi-domain, it is as shown in this figure. So here, uh, the total energy, total magnetic energy will be the magnetostatic energy plus wall energy. So this theory of ferromagnetism. Here, uh, the ferromagnetic substance contain a number of small regions called domains as we have discussed in the uh, previous slide. Uh, the value of spontaneous magnetization of specimen is determined by the vector sum of magnetic moments of the individual domains. The spontaneous magnetization within which uh, domain is due to the existence of a molecular field which produces a parallel alignment of the atomic dipoles. The field is assumed to be proportional to magnetization of each domain. So here which field According to which the field is directly proportional to magnetization m dash. So BW is equal to lambda m. And here the total magnetization will be the effective magnetic field will be equal to uh, this magnetic field and the external magnetic field that is equal to B effective is equal to BW plus B. Then further, if you uh, replace BW by lambda into m, lambda is a constant and m dash is the magnetization. So uh, here we use the notation M dash for the magnetization and we use the notation M for the magnetic moment. So M dash is equal to N into M square B upon 3 KT. So M dash will be equal to N M square B effective upon 3 KT as we know. So M dash will be equal to N M square lambda M dash plus B upon 3 KT. M dash minus N into M square lambda M dash upon 3 KT is equal to N M square b upon 3 kt this is a simple equations if you take m dash common that will be in the bracket 1 minus nm square lambda upon 3 kt is equal to nm square b upon 3 kt so here after that m dash will be equal to this much so here we uh, replace uh, this constant by some constant or say volume susceptibility is given as uh, psi v is equal to mu zero m dash upon b m dash is the magnetization as we have uh, said earlier so is equal to mu zero upon b into nm square b upon 3 kt upon uh, 1 minus nm square lambda upon 3 kt now we make replacements okay yes this is the next step yes so here we uh, replace this mu zero nm square uh, upon 3k as say c some constant say curie constant then that will be the volume susceptibility or say ferromagnetic susceptibility will be equal to c upon t uh, upon 1 minus c lambda mu zero into t so again it will be equal to c upon t minus c lambda into mu zero and that will be again equal to tc tc will be tc is a constant which is having the same dimension as the temperature so therefore it is shown as a tc uh, say we may call it as a curie temperature tc is equal to c lambda upon mu zero yes so antiferromagnetism 
uh, intrinsic magnetic moments of valence shell electron point in opposite direction that is anti parallel okay so that is the difference between ferromagnetic and anti ferromagnetic material uh, no net magnetic moment is there and uh, examples are transition metal compounds nickel oxide hematite these are the examples so let us see what is the uh, difference between this ferromagnetic and anti ferromagnetism as shown in figure so they are anti parallel orientation of the spins okay for the neighboring uh, magnets are oriented anti parallelly therefore they cancel each other's magnetic moment so below the critical temperature uh, the magnetic moments are anti parallel when magnetic field is applied at the temperatures below the critical temperature uh, the magnetization of an anti ferromagnet remains constant below that the critical temperature and the material retain their anti parallel alignment when the external field is removed so the magnetic moments come from the spin of the atomic valence electrons without a magnetic field applied to the material the mag magnetic material of each orbiting electron are randomly oriented uh, when a magnetic field is applied to the material the magnetic moment of each electron or say magnetic moments of electron respond and align anti parallel to each neighboring moment so here anti ferromagnetic materials magnetic moments are temperature dependent and their critical temperature is nil temperature that is shown by tn at which a magnetic phase changes of course so that we will show in the next slide with a graph so typically the nil temperature is found to be below the room temperature but there are some exceptions above this nil temperature the material behave paramagnetically with all the magnetic moments align in the applied magnetic field direction therefore enhancing the overall magnetic field below the nil temperature the magnetic moments spontaneously align anti parallel and the net magnetization of the material is zero because the individual magnetic moments within the sublattice is cancel out the material susceptibility changes around the nil temperature the susceptibility increases inversely with the temperature above the nil temperature and it decreases inversely below this nil temperature so here the temperature dependence of paramagnetic materials can be determined by curie law that is psi is equal to c upon t as we have seen already where uh, susceptibility is inversely proportional to the temperature uh, c is a curie constant uh, the more general uh, curie wish law is given by psi is equal to c upon t minus tc as we have already seen this expression uh, tc is another curie constant having temperature as a its units can be positive or say negative depending upon the material therefore the material susceptibility is a function of temperature where an increase in temperature will decrease the materials responsiveness to the applied magnetic field the increase in susceptibility of anti ferromagnetic material above nil temperature leads to the negative tc so that the curie wish law of anti ferromagnetic material becomes like this so here so it will be uh, sorry it will be plus psi is equal to yes i will make the correction here i will make the correction here okay uh, yes so that will be that will be plus so yes that will be plus yes okay as i said this is will be plus and anti ferromagnetic materials occur commonly among the transition metal compounds especially oxides uh, examples include hematite metals such as chromium alloys such as uh, iron manganese and oxides such as nickel oxide okay this is about the anti ferromagnetism so this is the graph uh, i was talking about 
this is susceptibility versus temperature and at nil temperature susceptibility is maximum and uh, yes uh, yes the ferry magnetic materials this is another category of magnetic materials so here they retain magnetism after removal of external magnetic field but neighboring pair of electron spins point in opposite direction the lattice arrangement uh, makes the magnetic movement pointing in one direction stronger than the other so here the uh, magnetic moments are not equal they are anti parallel but they are not equal they therefore they does not constant each other's magnetic moment the examples are magnetite and ferrites so ferromagnetic materials have two sets of dipole moments pointing in opposite direction as i said the magnetic moments do not cancel each others but because of the dipole moment in one direction is smaller than the other uh, on a bh graph ferromagnetism is like a ferromagnetism okay so yes so this is the this is what i said it is not equal the magnitude of this moments are not equal these these are not equal they therefore they cannot cancel each other's magnetic moment completely so here uh, the major difference between the two is the net magnetic moment of former is non zero and while the latter is zero as i said uh, the anti ferromagnetic materials thus do not exhibit spontaneous magnetization while the ferry magnetic materials does very magnetic materials contain magnetic moments aligned anti parallel to one another as illustrated similar to the anti ferromagnetic materials however instead of having a zero net magnetic moment different number of unpaired electrons in the component transition metals result do not cancel one other but resulting in a spontaneous magnetization the temperature dependence of ferromagnetic material is similar to that of the ferromagnetic material uh, there is a curie temperature at which magnetic moments become randomized causing ferromagnetic materials to begin to behave paramagnetically before the curie temperature the saturation magnetization of ferromagnetic material decreases with increasing temperature until it vanishes completely at curie temperature above the curie temperature there is a one upon psi relationship with temperature which also indicates a further decrease in magnetization so variation of susceptibility with temperature uh, for this all the four types of materials can be shown like this so for paramagnetic material it is like this psi is equal to c by t susceptibility with versus temperature will be like this and a psi versus uh, t graph for the ferromagnetic material uh, from the equation psi is equal to c upon t minus t theta it is like this and for anti ferromagnetic material the psi is equal to c upon t plus theta the behavior shows uh, like this in the graph here uh, we can show the nil temperature here so this is the nil temperature so this is the nil temperature this is the nil temperature and for the ferromagnetic material the behavior of psi versus temperature will be as shown in figure so this is how one can discuss the four types of materials and their behavior or say variation of uh, this uh, um, susceptibility with temperature for all the four types of materials can be seen uh, directly from this graph four relations so here uh, we end up our lecture we will see some numerical problems on the magnetism in the next lecture okay thank you so much